Welcome to Mrs. Gray's Geometry Videos. Today we are going to start Lesson 7.2 and we are going to learn about similar polygons. Now last semester the focus was on congruency and we use that word constantly, but now we are going to use a new word and that is similar. So before we begin, let's look at a few examples of some similar polygons. This is a square, and yes, I have inserted a picture for your entertainment, but it is still a square, even though there's a picture inside it. And just to review, a square has four angles that are all 90 degrees, so all of these angles would be 90 degrees. A similar square might look something like this. So just um, something to note, all of the angles are 90 degrees, even though the square is smaller, the angles have remained the same. The only difference is that each one of these sides are smaller. And if we were to set them up and um, compare them, they would all have the same ratio or scale factor. Or we could also say that they're proportional. And let's take a look at another one. Again, this is a similar square. All of the angles are still 90 degrees, but the sides are smaller but they have the same ratio or scale factor. To conclude, similar polygons always have the same two properties. So please be prepared to know these for your video quiz. The first one is that all corresponding angles are congruent. That means that when we looked at the square, no matter how big the square was or how small the square was, all of the angles always had a measurement of 90 degrees. But the sides are not congruent they have the same ratio or the scale factor. So corresponding sides have the same ratio or scale factor, or we could also say that they are proportional. What we are going to do is we are going to look at these two similar trapezoids. But before we begin, please note this new symbol. This means similar. So what this is saying here is that trapezoid ABCD is similar to trapezoid EFGH. And uh, last semester we learned that the order of the letters is really important. So what this is telling me here, and I've color coded this for you, is that angle A corresponds with angle E because they both are the first letter in this order here. So angle A and angle E would have the same measurement. And B is the second letter and F is also the second letter, and that is telling me that B and F have the same measurement, so they both would have the same degrees. And then um, you get the idea for the other two angles. I don't need to mention those. What we're going to do now is talk about a proportionality statement, and that is where we list all of the corresponding angles that are congruent, and we list the corresponding sides that have the same scale factor. So all corresponding angles are congruent, and I've color-coded these for you. So that means, again, that angle A is the first letter, angle E is the first letter in the second trapezoid, so these are both congruent. So I would just list that right here in my proportionality statement. And then B and F are the second letters, so what that's telling me is that these two angles are congruent, or they have the same measurement. And then C and G and D and H have the same thing. Now what's a little bit different is that we are not going to list that the sides are congruent. We're going to say that they have the same ratio. So what we would do is say AB, or segment AB, and again, it corresponds with the order right here. AB are the first two letters, and it would correspond with segment EF. And what we would do is put that as a fraction. So what that's giving me is a ratio or a scale factor. So again, instead of listing that these two sides are congruent, I'm setting them up and listing them as a fraction. And if I were to simplify this, every single one of these would have the same fraction or the same scale factor, which you're going to see in a second. So BC is the next two letters, so that's segment BC, and it would correspond with the next two letters over here, which would go with FG, but instead of saying they're congruent, I would list them as a fraction. Let's put some numbers in because I think that'll make a little more sense to you. 
So in order to find our scale factor, the easiest thing to do is look at the corresponding sides. And what I've done is I've co uh, color coded the corresponding sides just to make it a little more clear to you. But if you want to find the scale factor easily, look for the two corresponding sides that actually have numbers instead of variables because if we have numbers, we can simplify that and work with that. So if you look, both of these are yellow. They're corresponding sides, and we can look to the order of the letters to confirm that. We have AD, which is the first and the last, and this corresponds with EH, which is, again, the first and the last over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and set them up as a fraction. So I'm going to put the 6 over here and then the 10 over here. But again, I'm not saying they're congruent. I'm setting them up as a fraction. This is my scale factor. And this scale factor is going to be the same scale factor for every single set of corresponding sides. Now, when we list the scale factor, we always want to express it as simplified. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 over 5 because 6 and 10 are both divisible by 2. That simplifies to 3 over 5. Once you have the scale factor, you can set up proportions and cross multiply to solve for the missing sides. So what I'm going to do, oh, sorry, that was weird. Um, I'm going to use that scale factor, 3 over 5, to find my value for y. So what I've done is I've listed my scale factor. I'm going to use the same scale factor for every single proportion. And 9 corresponds with y. So bc, and again, look to the order of the letters, bc corresponds with fg. And what I've done is I've listed that as a fraction. And notice, too, is that 3 went with the smaller trapezoid, so I need to be consistent. That's why I put 9 on the top here, because it goes with the smaller trapezoid. So whatever you start with, you need to be consistent on both sides. So what I'm going to do is just cross multiply. And I'm not going to show the work so that I don't make this video too long. But it would be 3y equals 45. And then to solve for y, I would just divide by 3 which would give me y equals 15. So again, that was just some basic algebra. I just cross multiplied. Let's do um, another proportion so that, again, you can see the pattern here. I'm using the exact same scale factor, but this time I'm going to solve for z. Now, z corresponds with this 20 right here, and I've color coded them in green, and I can confirm it up here as well, dc goes with gh, and um, I've listed my scale factor, and z goes with the smaller trapezoided. I started with the smaller one here. I have the smaller one here, and then I've set this up as a, as a fraction, and I'm just going to cross multiply. This would be 5z equals 60, and then I would divide both sides by 5 to get that z by itself, and z would be 15. Now I want you to put the video on pause for a second, and I want you to solve for x by yourself. And if you come up with an answer of x equals 5, you have done it correctly. I'll see you in the next video.